Let us first acquaint ourselves with the term polymers before we study their classification in detail. Let's discuss the origin of the term polymer. Mer is derived from the Greek word for unit or part. Poly comes from the Greek word for many. So, a polymer can be defined as a compound in which smaller units, called monomers, combine to form a larger unit. In other words, a polymer is formed when many monomers are linked together in a chain. Thus, a monomer is the building block or repeating structural unit of a polymer. Monomers are simple, reactive molecules. They join by covalent bonds to form polymers in a process called polymerization. Polymers are extremely large molecules with high molecular masses. For this reason, they are also called macromolecules. Polymers have a wide variety of applications. In fact, the use of polymers marked a revolutionary step towards modern civilization. Polymers are used in the manufacture of plastic buckets, plastic cups and saucers, children's toys and synthetic clothing material. Plastics brought about remarkable changes in society and made life easier and more comfortable. Other materials made from polymers include automobile tires, packaging bags, gears, seals and electrical insulation. Polymers are the basis for four major industries, plastics, elastomers, fibers and paints and varnishes. Polymers can be classified in a variety of ways. They can be classified on the basis of their source, structure, mode of polymerization, molecular forces. Depending upon the source from which they are obtained, polymers are categorized into three types. Natural polymers, semi-synthetic polymers and synthetic polymers. Natural polymers are found in plants and animals. They provide much of our food, clothing and shelter. Examples are proteins, cellulose, starch, silk, wool, resin and rubber. Semi-synthetic polymers are derivatives of natural polymers. These are obtained from the chemical treatment of natural polymers. Semi-synthetic polymers are not found in nature. Examples are cellulose acetate or rayon and cellulose nitrate which is highly inflammable. Note that rayon obtained by the chemical treatment of wood pulp which contains a natural polymer cellulose resembles silk in appearance. Hence, it is also referred to as artificial silk. Synthetic polymers are prepared in the laboratory. Examples are plastics such as polythene or polyethylene, fibers such as nylon and synthetic rubbers such as neoprene. The manufacture and use of these polymers boosted socio-economic development. 
on the basis of their structure. Polymers are classified into three types, linear, branched chain and cross-linked polymers. Let us study each of them in brief. Linear polymers are made from long straight chains. Examples are high density polyethylene or HDPE and polyvinyl chloride or PVC. Branched chain polymers contain linear chains that have some branches. One common example of a branched chain polymer is low density polyethylene or LDPE. Cross-linked or network polymers have connections between chains. These connections are strong covalent bonds that link various linear polymer chains. In order to form the covalent bonds connecting the chains, the monomers in cross-linked polymers must be bifunctional or trifunctional, meaning that they have more than one reactive center. Examples of cross-linked or network polymers are Bakelite and Melamine. On the mode of polymerization, polymers are classified into two categories, addition polymers and condensation polymers. Addition polymers, formed by the repeated addition of monomers containing double or triple bonds. The reaction involves breaking of pi bonds. Addition polymers are sometimes referred to as chain growth polymers. For example, ethene contains a carbon-carbon double bond. When polymerized, it forms polythene or polyethylene which has all single bonds. Addition polymers obtained from the polymerization of a single monomer are referred to as homopolymers. Polythene is a homopolymer. In contrast to homopolymers, copolymers are obtained by the addition polymerization of two different monomers. Let us draw some simple models to illustrate the difference between homopolymers and copolymers. The first illustration shows many identical monomer units polymerizing into a straight chain homopolymer. The second illustration shows a copolymer with a repeating AB pattern. Two important examples of copolymers are Buna S and Buna N. The general scheme for the addition reaction for Buna S is shown here. 1,3-butadiene and styrene combine to form a butadiene styrene copolymer. Condensation polymers or step growth polymers are the result of repeated condensation reactions between two different bifunctional monomers. Ethylene glycol, illustrated here, is an example of a bifunctional monomer. It is bifunctional because it has two hydroxyl groups. The condensation reactions involve the elimination of small molecules such as water, alcohol or hydrogen chloride. Illustrated here, is the condensation reaction between ethylene glycol and terephthalic acid to form polyethylene terephthalate or PET. When two different monomers link together, a water molecule is eliminated. 
Important examples of condensation polymers are terulene, also known as PET, or dacrin, nylon 6, 6, and nylon 6. Consider the two monomer structures shown here. Which would be more likely to form an addition polymer? Which would be more likely to form a condensation polymer? Monomer A would form a condensation monomer. It is a bifunctional monomer. Monomer A is one of the two components of Kevlar, a polyamide. Monomer B has a carbon-carbon double bond. It forms an addition polymer. Monomer B is a monomer of polyacrylonitrile, which is used to make rugs, blankets and clothing. Based on the molecular forces present in them, polymers are classified into four types, elastomers, fibers, thermoplastic polymers and thermosetting polymers. Let us study them one by one and see how their molecular forces affect their physical properties. Elastomers are rubber-like solids with elastic properties. An elastomer can be stretched to many times its original length. It snaps back to its original length when the external force is released. The polymer chain in elastomers are held together by very weak intermolecular forces. There may be a few cross links between chains. Many elastomers are copolymers. Examples of elastomers are Buna S, Buna N, neoprene, and natural rubber. Fibers are thread forming solids. Since these polymers can be elongated into long, thin threads, they have high tensile strength and high modulus, which means that they are strong. Hydrogen bonding exists between the chains because of which the chains are packed closely together. Examples of polymers that form fibers are polyamides such as nylon 6, 6 and polyesters. Which of these diagrams better represents an elastoma? A fiber? How can you explain your answer? Diagram A represents a fiber. The chains are closely packed which makes the structure crystalline in nature. Hydrogen bonds hold the chains in close contact. Diagram B represents an elastoma. There are some cross links between the chains, but the chains do not pack tightly because the intermolecular forces are weak. Thermoplastic polymers can be heated to soften and cooled to harden. Plastics that soften on heating and regain their original properties on cooling are called thermoplastic polymers. The chains in a thermoplastic polymer are linear or slightly branched. The intermolecular forces are intermediate in strength compared to elastomers and fibers. When heated, the chains can move past each other, so the sample becomes less rigid. Also, the chemical nature of these plastics doesn't get altered. Note that these plastics can be recycled after use. Some examples of thermoplastic polymers are polystyrene, polythene or polyethylene.
and Teflon and polyvinyls such as PVC. Thermosetting polymers once set harden permanently and cannot be reused. Plastics that change into hard and rigid materials upon heating are called thermosetting polymers. The chains in thermosetting polymers are cross-linked or heavily branched. When heated, they form extensive cross-linking. As a consequence, these plastics cannot be remolded. Additional heating causes a thermosetting polymer to decompose. As the chains are unable to separate. Instead, bonds break. Note that these plastics cannot be recycled or used again. Examples of thermosetting polymers are Bakelite, Melamine and Urea formaldehyde resin. Notice the extensive cross-linking shown in the structure of the Bakelite resin. You already know that the process of joining many small molecules or monomers together to form very large molecules or polymers is called polymerization. In general, polymers are formed in two ways. Depending upon the type of the polymerization mechanism or the mode of synthesis by which they are formed. These are addition polymerization or chain growth polymerization, condensation polymerization or step growth polymerization. Let's learn in detail about addition polymerization. In addition polymerization, the molecules of a monomer, such as an alkene or an alkadiene, add together to form a polymer. The polymer so formed is called an addition polymer. This type of polymerization involves a series of reactions, each of which utilizes a reactive particle such as a free radical and produces another similar reactive particle. Thus, free radicals induce a chain reaction. This mode of polymerization leads to an increase in the length or growth of the chain. Hence the name chain growth polymerization. Let us now look at the mechanism of addition polymerization. Addition polymerization usually occurs by a free radical mechanism. Free radicals are neutral, reactive chemical species with an unpaired electron. For example, the tertiary butyl free radical illustrated here. We need to take a detailed look at the free radical mechanism for addition polymerization. It starts with a chain initiation step, which actually occurs in several stages. First, a free radical generating initiator decomposes in the presence of light to form free radicals. For example, a molecule of benzoyl peroxide undergoes homolytic fission on exposure to light to form two free radicals. The free radicals then break down further to form a phenyl radical and carbon dioxide. Now, the phenyl radical reacts with a monomer, in this case, ethene, to form another free radical. 
The next step in the mechanism of free radical addition polymerization is the chain propagation step. The radical generated at the end of the chain initiation step reacts with another monomer, ethene, to form a new and bigger radical. This radical attacks another molecule of ethene to form a still bigger radical. The series of reactions continues. As a result of this chain reaction, the alkyl chain grows longer and longer. The polymerized product forms in the last step of the reaction, the chain termination step. Eventually, chain termination occurs when the product radical combines with another free radical chain and results in the formation of the polymerized product. The formation of polythene is shown here. Let us now look at how some important addition polymers are prepared and their uses. Some important addition polymers are low density polythene, high density polythene, Teflon and polyacrylonitrile. Let's look at each in turn. Low density polyethylene or polythene is often given the acronym LDPE. To obtain LDPE, it is necessary to polymerize ethene under high pressure in a temperature range of 350 to 570 Kelvin in the presence of a catalyst. Typically, either oxygen or a peroxide initiator, such as benzoyl peroxide, is used as a catalyst. The equation shown here represents the polymerization reaction to form LDPE. LDPE is a highly branched structure where the branches in turn may also have side chains. The branches keep the chains from packing closely together and so the resulting plastic is soft. LDPE is chemically inert. It is tough but flexible and a poor conductor of electricity. LDPE is used to make insulation for electrical wiring. Besides squeeze bottles, toys and flexible pipes. High density polythene or polyethylene also known as HDPE is another polymer made from ethene monomers. To make HDPE Ethene is reacted in a hydrocarbon solvent in the presence of a Ziegler natter catalyst at a low temperature of 333 to 343 Kelvin and a high pressure of 6 to 7 atmospheres. A Ziegler natter catalyst is a combination of triethyl aluminium and titanium tetrachloride. When triethyl aluminium and titanium tetrachloride are mixed in a hydrocarbon solvent, a heterogeneous precipitate forms, which catalyzes polymerization of alkenes like ethene. The catalyst that results has an empty orbital on titanium, which can form a complex with double bond in ethene. These reaction conditions lead to linear molecules that are closely packed together with a high overall density. HDPE is tough and hard. It is used to make buckets, dustbins, bottles and pipes, among other things. Teflon is another example of an addition polymer. The structure of Teflon is shown here. Can you determine the structure and the name of the monomer used to make Teflon? 
Since Teflon is an addition polymer, it suggests that the monomer contains a carbon-carbon double bond and four fluorine atoms. The monomer used to make Teflon is tetrafluoroethene. The overall equation for the polymerization reaction is shown here. Teflon is the trade name for polytetrafluoroethene. To make Teflon, tetrafluoroethene is heated with a free radical or persulfate catalyst at high pressures. Teflon is chemically inert and resistant to attack by corrosive substances. Teflon is used to make oil seals and gaskets. It is extensively used to make non-stick cookware. Teflon coatings decompose at temperatures above 300 degrees Celsius. So, don't use non-stick pans at high heat. Be careful not to scratch the coating and replace pans when the Teflon coating is damaged. Another important addition polymer is polyacrylonitrile. This polymer is formed by polymerizing acrylonitrile in the presence of a peroxide catalyst. The overall reaction is shown here. Polyacrylonitrile produces the commercially important acrylic fiber. The trade names for acrylic fibers include Orlon and Acrylan. These acrylic fibers are soft and flexible and produce lofty yarns. These properties of acrylic fiber closely resemble those of wool. Hence, acrylic fibers are often used to make sweaters and other pieces of apparel. Acrylic fibers have good resistance to stains, chemical, insects and fungi. Can you write the chemical equation that represents the formation of polystyrene from styrene? The formula for styrene is given here. Polystyrene is an addition polymer. This can be inferred from the carbon-carbon double bond in styrene. Polystyrene is commonly referred to as styrofoam. In condensation polymerization, the molecules of a monomer combine with the elimination of simple molecules such as water, alcohol and ammonia to form a polymer. The polymer so formed is called a condensation polymer. You already know that condensation polymers are the result of repeated condensation reactions between two different bifunctional monomers. Hence, this type of polymerization also involves a series of reactions, just as in addition polymerization, but it differs in the aspect that each step is independent of the preceding one. The series of reactions in condensation polymerization is attributed to the presence of more than one functional group in the monomer. In other words, the formation of a polymer is possible as the monomer can undergo reaction at more than one functional group. The product formed in each step of the reaction as a result of condensation between two different bifunctional monomers also has a bifunctional group that can further react with another monomer to form a larger molecule. The series of such reactions continues. The stepwise condensation of monomers, which results in the formation of a polymer, is called step growth polymerization. Illustrated here is the condensation reaction between ethylene glycol and terephthalic acid polyethylene terephthalate, PET, also known as Dacrin. 
Note that in each step, when two different monomers combine, a water molecule is eliminated. Let us now see how some important condensation polymers are prepared and their uses. Polyamides, polyesters, phenol formaldehyde polymers and melamine formaldehyde polymers are all important condensation polymers. Polyamides are polymers that have amide linkages. Polyamides may be naturally occurring, such as proteins or synthetic, such as nylons. Nylons are commercially important synthetic fibers. The general reaction to obtain polyamides can be described as the reaction of diamines with dicarboxylic acids or dibasic acid to form amide linkages. Seven different forms of nylon have been synthesized. One important nylon polymer is nylon 66. To obtain nylon 66, adipic acid or 1,6-hexanedioic acid is made to react with hexamethylene diamine or 1,6-diaminohexane at a high temperature of 553 Kelvin and high pressure. This polymer is called nylon 66 because there are six carbon atoms in each monomer adipic acid and hexamethylene diamine that participates in the reaction. Nylon 66 is used to make sheets, bristles for brushes, textiles and tire cord. Nylon 6, another synthetic fiber, resembles the properties of nylon 66 closely. To obtain nylon 6, caprolactam is subjected to prolonged heating with water at a high temperature of 533 to 543 Kelvin. Nylon 6 is known by its trade name, Perlon L. It is used to make tire cords, fabrics and ropes. Polyesters are another important group of condensation polymers. The general reaction to obtain a polyester is a condensation reaction between a dicarboxylic acid and a diol. Dacrin is the trade name for polyethylene terephthalate or PET, a common polyester. To make dacrin, ethylene glycol and terephthalic acid are reacted at 420 to 460 Kelvin in the presence of a zinc acetate, antimony trioxide catalyst. The structure of the repeating unit is shown here. Dacrin is crease resistant. Therefore, it is often blended with cotton and or wool. It is also used as glass reinforcing material in safety helmets. Can you write the equation for the formation of Kelvar via a condensation reaction from the monomer shown here? These two monomers can form a polyamide chain with para or 1,4 linkages. Notice that HCl is formed during the condensation reaction. Kevlar fibers are very strong as many hydrogen bonds are present between the chains, as shown in the illustration here. Kevlar is used to make protective gear, including bulletproof vests. It is also used to make a variety of sports equipment, including boats and tennis rackets, besides 
puncture resistant bicycle tires. So not for maltehyde polymers are another important group of condensation polymers. The first step to produce a phenol formaldehyde polymer is the condensation reaction of phenol with formaldehyde in the presence of an acid or a base catalyst. This results in the formation of ortho and or hydroxymethylphenol as shown in the equation. In the subsequent steps, the hydroxymethylphenol derivatives react further with phenols to form polymers with rings joined by CH2 groups. For example, the linear structure shown here, known as Novolac, is used in paints. When Novolac is heated with formaldehyde, many cross-links between the chains develop. This cross-linked rigid three-dimensional structure is called Bakelite, the first synthetic polymer that was ever developed. Bakelite can be used to make combs, phonograph records, electrical switches and utensil handles. Bakelite is also used as a porcelain substitute, such as in game pieces. Another important condensation polymer is the melamine formaldehyde polymer. The first step in the formation of this polymer is the reaction between melamine and formaldehyde, which results in the formation of a resin intermediate. The resin intermediate undergoes condensation polymerization to form melamine. Melamine is used to make unbreakable crockery. It can chip and scratch. However, and it is not microwave safe. Melamine is also used to make fireproof jackets. Note that both Bakelite and melamine are thermosetting polymers. Copolymerization is a type of polymerization reaction in which more than one kind of monomers polymerize to form a copolymer. Copolymers can be obtained by either chain growth polymerization or step growth polymerization. You already know that in contrast to copolymers, homopolymers are obtained by the polymerization of a single monomeric species. Here is a problem for you to try based on this concept. Identify the structures here as either a homopolymer or a copolymer. Structure A is a butadiene styrene copolymer, Buna S. The monomers used are 1,3-butadiene and styrene. Structure B is a homopolymer, polystyrene. It is made from styrene monomers. Let us now understand how the properties of a copolymer differ from that of a homopolymer with a suitable example. Buna S, a butadiene styrene copolymer, is elastomeric and tough, as in this bicycle tire. In contrast, polystyrene, a homopolymer, is brittle, as a mixture of two or more different monomers undergoes copolymerization. The copolymers produced have better physical and mechanical properties than homopolymers. For instance, the copolymerization of styrene with butadiene adds toughness and with acrylonitrile enhances resistance to impact. The butadiene styrene copolymer finds use in the manufacture of automobile tires, flow tiles, footwear components and cable insulation. 
Let us now study rubber and elastoma in detail. Natural rubber is a polymer with elastomeric properties. It is obtained from the bark of the rubber tree in the form of latex. Rubber latex is a colloidal dispersion of rubber in water. Isoprene 2-methyl 1,3-butadiene polymerizes to form cis 1,4-polyisoprene, which is natural rubber. Thus, natural rubber is a linear polymer of 2-methyl 1,3-butadiene. The chains are held together by weak van der Waals interactions and hence it is elastic and non-crystalline. The polymer chains form a coiled structure. Natural rubber can be stretched. When stretched, the chains get aligned in the direction of the external force. When the external force is released, the chains snap back to their original positions. Untreated natural rubber is quite sticky. It becomes soft at high temperatures, greater than 335 Kelvin, and brittle at low temperatures, less than 283 Kelvin. Natural rubber absorbs water. It is soluble in non-polar solvents, and is susceptible to attack by oxidizing agents. These properties of natural rubber limit its usefulness. Hence, to improve the physical properties of natural rubber, a process called vulcanization is employed. Most rubber used today is vulcanized rubber. To vulcanize rubber, Raw rubber is mixed with sulfur and heated between 373 and 415 degrees Kelvin. This forms sulfur cross links at the reactive sites of double bonds, such as allylic positions. And thus, the rubber gets stiffer. Commercially, other substances called accelerators and activators are added to enhance the quality of the rubber. Let's look at the possible structures of vulcanized rubber. Notice the sulfur cross-links between the chains. The vulcanization process is generally irreversible. The cross-links help vulcanized rubber to maintain its shape when stretched. Vulcanized rubber is not very sticky, unlike natural rubber. Vulcanized rubber has high tensile strength and is usable over a wide temperature range. It is also resistant to abrasion. Vulcanized rubber has many uses. Perhaps its best known uses are car tires and shoe soles. Synthetic rubbers have also been developed. These are more flexible, tougher and durable than natural rubber. Synthetic rubber can be defined as any rubber-like polymer that can be vulcanized. Synthetic rubber must be elastomeric. It can be stretched and then must return to its original shape. Neoprene is an example of a synthetic rubber. This homopolymer is made from a monomer that is a 1,3-butadiene derivative, chloroprene. Chloroprene undergoes free radical addition polymerization to form neoprene. Neoprene is resistant to vegetable and mineral oils. It is used to manufacture conveyor belts, gaskets and hoses. It has a wide variety of household and recreational uses as well. Another important synthetic rubber is Buna N, also known as nitrile rubber. It is a copolymer 
of 1,3-butadiene and another unsaturated monomer, acrylonitrile. A peroxide catalyst is required for the reaction. The overall equation is shown here. Buna N or nitrile is resistant to petrol, lubricating oil and organic solvents. It can be used over a wide temperature range. And so, it has many applications in automobiles. Buna N is used to make oil seals and tank linings. Non-latex disposable gloves are typically made from nitrile. The molecular mass of polymers determines most of their physical properties, such as viscosity, tensile strength and toughness. The better the physical properties of a polymer, the more is its commercial importance. That is why the study of the molecular mass of polymers is important. You already know that polymer molecules have extremely large molar masses. However, polymer samples are a mixture of molecules with different numbers of repeating units. The different sized chains of molecules present in the mixture of a polymer will account for its overall behavior. In other words, the behavior of a polymer depends upon the availability of monomers in the reaction mixture or the way the polymer is produced. Therefore, the molecular masses of polymers are best described as a distribution of molecular masses. So, when we discuss molecular masses of polymers, it's most appropriate to discuss average molecular masses. We can calculate the average molecular mass in two ways. Number average molecular mass and weight average molecular mass. Number average molecular mass Mn is essentially an arithmetic mean. To calculate number average molecular mass, find the total mass of polymer molecules and divide it by the total number of polymer molecules. Weight average molecular mass is indicated by Mw. The formula to calculate Mw is given here. The molecular mass of polymers may be determined by a variety of methods. These include dilute solution viscometry, size exclusion chromatography, mass spectrometry, light scattering and ultracentrifugation. Let us now study biodegradable polymers in detail. Let us first try to understand how most synthetic polymers cause environmental hazards. Most synthetic polymers are non-biodegradable and persist in the environment for a very long time. These polymers are responsible for the accumulation of solid waste, which causes acute environmental problems. Let us see how polymers such as plastics pose a serious threat to the environment and of course to human life. Although plastics have become indispensable in our lives, they cause many environmental problems. One major problem is the accumulation of plastic waste or toxic substances. For example, the clogging of drains by polythene bags and other plastic material causes floods in cities. Animals mistake plastic for food and choke on them. Plastic may also get entangled in the intestine and cause an agonizing death. 
plastics do not degrade for a very long time. Discarded plastics fill up landfills, which, in due course, results in the contamination of soil and water. The Great Pacific Garbage Patch consists mostly of plastic bags, bottle caps, and styrofoam that have been swept away into the ocean from poorly secured landfills and other sources. It is a serious threat to marine life. You can choose better alternatives that will help reduce the use of plastics. Use soluble starch pellets instead of styrofoam packing. Use reusable cups instead of disposable plastic cups. Bring reusable bags when shopping and make sure polythene bags stay out of drains. Recycle your plastics or reuse them instead of just throwing them into the trash. Many plastics can be recycled. Recycling starts with the collection of post-consumer and post-industrial plastics. Once the plastics have been collected, they need to be sorted. In principle, many polymers can be recycled. In practice, the most commonly recycled plastics are thermoplastics, such as PET, polyethylene terephthalate, and high-density polythene. Plastics are recycled by type and then by color. Finally, the samples are subjected to chipping, which involves chemical treatment. After chipping, the plastic can be reused. Can you list three steps that you could take to improve plastics recycling in your neighborhood, community or school? There are many ways that you can do this. Here are some suggestions. You could organize recycling collection stations in your community or at school. Encourage local merchants to participate. They could sell reusable bags and collect plastic bags for recycling. One company in Bangalore uses discarded plastics to make roads. Keeping in view the potential environmental hazards of synthetic polymeric waste, certain biodegradable synthetic polymers have been developed. Biodegradable polymers that are synthesized contain functional groups similar to the functional groups in biopolymers such as wool, silk and cellulose. The copolymerization of 3-hydroxybutanoic acid and 3-hydroxypentanoic acid forms a synthetic biodegradable polymer PHBV, polybeta-hydroxybutyrate cobeta Hydroxyvalerate. Notice the ester linkage in the repeating unit of PHBV. PHBV is used for specialty packaging. Because it is biodegradable, PHBV is used for medical sutures that don't have to be removed after surgery. And for controlled drug release. Here is a problem for you to try. Nylon 2 Nylon 6 is an alternating copolymer of glycine and amino caproic acid. Can you write the equation showing its formation? Glycine and amino caproic acid form an amide linkage by condensation as shown here. Notice how the polymer has a 2-carbon group and then a 6-carbon group in the repeating unit. Nylon 2 Nylon 6 is a biodegradable polymer. Another biodegradable polymer 
is polycaprolactone or PCL. PCL is used for medical sutures, drug delivery and the manufacture of specialty polyurethanes. It has even more applications when blended with other polymers. PLA or polylactic acid is another biodegradable polymer. The starting material is plant-based, derived from cornstarch or sugarcane. Lactic acid is dimerized to make the lactite monomer, which undergoes a ring-opening polymerization. PLA is being used for packaging, such as cups and takeout containers for food. However, it can only be used for cold beverages and cannot be used on very hot. It has various consumer uses, such as fiber for clothing and medical applications, such as sutures and stents. Commercial composting facilities are needed to break down PLA and it is more expensive than PET. Using biodegradable polymers has some benefits. They don't require incineration. So, they lower carbon dioxide emissions. They decrease environmental pollution as they can be readily degraded. They can be used as internal sutures that don't have to be surgically removed. Commercially important polymers include polycarbonates, polyvinyl chloride, glyptyl, polypropene, polystyrene, urea formaldehyde polymers, bakelite and polyurethanes. Let's look at each of these in turn. Polycarbonates are a group of polymers named for the carbonate groups holding the repeating units together in their backbone chain. These are thermoplastic polymers that belong to the class polyesters. The most common polycarbonate is made from bisphenol A or BPA, a diphenol and carbonic acid. The formula for the polycarbonate of bisphenol A is shown here. Polycarbonates have high impact resistance. They are transparent, but they can scratch easily if not coated. Therefore, they are useful for spectacle lenses, compact discs, bottles and shatterproof windows. Polyvinyl chloride or PVC is obtained from the free radical polymerization of vinyl chloride as shown here. PVC is resistant to water and fire. It is used to make shower curtains, raincoats, pipes for plumbing, vinyl siding for houses, flooring and electrical insulation. Glyptyl or alkyde is a condensation polymer formed from phthalic acid and glycerol or phthalic acid and ethylene glycol. Glyptyl is a polyester that can form cross-links. Cross-linked glyptyl is a thermosetting polymer. Glyptyl is used in the manufacture of paints, lacquers and resins. Polypropene is an addition polymer of propene. 
it is abbreviated as PP. Polypropene has a range of uses. It is used in the manufacture of medical equipment, laboratory equipment, electronic equipment and automotive components. It is also used to make ropes, toys, pipes, fibers and so on. Polystyrene is a homopolymer of styrene. It is commonly referred to as styroform. It is used in the manufacture of toys, radio and television cabinets, plastic cups, packaging and food containers. It is also used as an insulator. Urea formaldehyde polymers are formed from the condensation reaction between urea and formaldehyde. Urea formaldehyde polymers are used for making unbreakable cups and laminated sheets. Bakelite, a phenol formaldehyde polymer, is another commercially important condensation polymer. Bakelite is used to make combs, phonograph records, electrical switches, utensil handles and computer disks. Bakelite is also used as a porcelain substitute, such as in game pieces. Polyurethanes are a class of polymers with a urethane linkage. The formula for a simple polyurethane is shown here. In general, they are made from two monomers, a diisocyanate and a dihydroxy alcohol. Can you draw the chemical structures of the two monomers used to synthesize the polyurethane shown here? Remember that polyurethanes are typically made from a diisocyanate and a dihydroxy alcohol. Working backwards from the polymer structure, we can draw these two structures. Polyurethanes are very versatile polymers. Their many forms include foams, elastomers and fibers.